Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Agri-Food Conversations, brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. I'm Tom Bunn, an associate on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you all to our discussion today. Hmm. Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, and this month's theme is cell-based meat. On today's call, we are joined by Yuki Hanyu, founder and CEO of Integriculture. Integra Culture is a cellular agriculture company that is developing cell-based meat as a sustainable protein alternative. Its low-cost cell culture technology, Colnet system, is a new platform designed to expand the reach of cell culturing into foods and leather made from animal cells. The system mimics the intercellular interactions present in animals and, in theory, can be used to culture multiple types of animal cells at scale and at low cost. Each of you knows companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We've invited you to this presentation because you are some of the smartest, most talented people in Integra Culture's market. Your potential customers for their products and services, you've built a similar company, or you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities that they may face. Before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a moment to answer. While well, the poll is running, a few process comments. We are not soliciting investment. This presentation is provide information to help Integra Culture find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. Secondly, you can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time, and we will answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. And finally, this presentation, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. So without further delay, I am pleased to introduce Yuki Hanyu, founder and CEO of Integriculture. Thanks for joining us, Yuki. Uh, hello, thank you very much for the introduction. I'm, this, uh, I'm Yuki Hanyu, the CEO of Integriculture Company. Um, Integriculture is a, um, a cellular agriculture infrastructure company that, that's primarily B2B. Um, we, provide, uh, cap um, we provide access to the cellular agriculture technology uh, for all uh, starting with food companies, but um, not limited to, um, we wish to uh, provide this technology to even the smallest institutions in the future as the technology develops. Uh, so um, this is becoming more, uh, more like a, um, uh, um, something that's like always said in like every con every conferences on the uh, unsustainability of, uh, of protein sources. So I'm not going to get into the details for now. Uh, but so as a solution to that, um, um, there's a, um, a huge hype about cell, cult cell cultured meat. That's basically um, 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 real meat cultured from animal cells using culture, uh, culture medium. But at, the, but at the same time, it's also um, commonly known that um, the cost of cell culture has been very high, um, starting with, um, with the demonstration in 2013 that costed, uh, costed about a quarter million um, dollars per burger. Um, it's becoming cheap, um, it, it's becoming cheaper, but um, it's still um, above the, uh, way above the market price. Um, the reason why uh, cell culture meat, in, in meat is being so expensive is mainly due to these three factors um, or, the or the technical challenges. So one is the growth factors, which is also known as hormones, the, that being extremely expensive. And, uh, these uh, growth factors are signaling compounds for, uh, for, that tells the cells to grow. Um, these compounds are, are required only in small quantities but they tend to um, they have very high unit price, like um, for FG for a growth factor called FGF two. It's called it costs about two million dollars per gram. TGF beta eighty one million dollars per gram. No wonder why it becomes like a quarter million dollars if you use um, per burger if you use this um, every time you multiply cells. Then there's um, a basal medium. That's basically uh, that mostly consists of sugar, um, amino acids, and other commonly known nutrients. These um, uh, this is not as expensive expensive as growth factors, but it's 
traditionally used basal medium used in biopharma industry it co often costs about um, twenty dollars per liter, which is which is I would say very expensive, especially given that basal medium is basically something like Gatorade. Well, I think gate, the market price of Gatorade is something about uh, one dollar per liter, or or um, or even or much lower, especially at the production price. I think at the production price of the Gatorade will be something around even ten to twenty cents per liter, or even cheaper. So basal medium should be as cheap as that, in theory. Then there's the bioreactor problem, and um, as the third issue. Because to culture cells, you need large tanks called uh, bioreactors, but they tend to be very expensive, especially if the cell density is low. So, but if you can have higher cell density, you can get you can get produce the same amount of uh, cultured cells with smaller, cheaper bioreactor. So that's where our technology our technology colonist system comes in, um, especially for the cost of growth factors. So, for some, for something that costs millions of dollars per gram, if you purchase from outside, um, Calnet system basically makes it in, inside the system. But the system consists of the target cell bioreactor and feeder feeder bioreactors. And feeder bioreactors contain organ cells like liver and pancreas uh, pancreatic cells, and those cells produce uh, produce growth factors. So pr uh, the growth factors produced. Basically, gets car uh, carried um, carried uh, carried uh, carried away into the target cell bioreactor uh, on the circulating cult uh, circulating culture medium, and the meat cells are in the target cell bioreactor. So this is um, but this is basically what's happening in uh, natural systems in like a natural animal body or fish body, where uh, organs produce growth factors. Um, the, the circulating blood uh, carries the growth factors to all other parts of the, the body to make the body cells grow. So this is more like um, um, this. This is exactly a, a so-called biomimicry. So this basically um, it cuts the cost of growth factors to near zero. And this is um, the current system at work. Um, the gold standard for the existing uh, cell culture is the use of uh, DMEM 10% FBS, or DMEM is the name of basal medium, and FBS is fetal bovine serum. Uh, that's the, um, uh, the darker blue line. Um, and, the, um, and if you use the Calnet, uh, Calnet uh, system, it goes through, uh, the cells multiply like the light blue line goes. So, um, if you use uh, the traditional method, the um, cells double every 48 hours, while um, if you use the Calnet uh, system, um, and the cells double every uh, 30 to 31 hours. So it's already, um, the performance is already beyond the, that of the FBS. Uh, so Calnet's so uh, so uh, serum is, mm, so what we are what we are making here is with the Calnet system is you could also say it's a culture cell culture serum that we are making with the Calnet system. And what's actually in the Calnet serum? Uh, so uh, there's a photo of five liters of Calnet uh, Calnet serum. So it's kind of like an um, FBS equivalent. Um, and what we found is that uh, depending on the uh, Depending on the combinations of feeder cells in the feeder bioreactors, we can produce a customized colored serum. So, in the previous example, um, we've demonstrated that for uh, um, for a colored serum targeted at duck hepatocyte to uh, basically cell uh, to make cell culture foie gras. Um, um, but if you change the if if we change the combination of feeder cells. Um, we can target uh, other types of cells like um, um, chicken um, chicken muscle cells or, or fat cells, or if you use um, uh, cells of other species, um, we, we could target that for like beef muscle cells. So uh, there's so there, uh, this. Um, uh, 
this shows the uh, our second point on the uh, basal medium. So a basal medium is used to be low in biopharma grade, costed about 20 liters for dollars, uh, which, which should be uh, cheaper than uh, 20 cents per liter. Uh, we've already developed a food grade basal medium, um, but uh, and, and uh, we've already uh, demonstrated food grade um, the basal medium, uh, and um, it's, the performance, performance is shown on the right. Um, we actually already sell this food grade basal medium. It's already being used in university labs um, with, um, without any without any performance um, performance problems compared to the traditional um, the basal medium. Um, but we are not stopping there. We are making we're basically making this even cheaper towards 23 and 25 using um, yeast hydrolysate or, or, or even micro uh, microalgae hydrolysate uh, in the. <clears throat> So this makes uh, the use of uh, this hydrolysis makes uh, makes basal medium much cheaper. And if if I if we start using microalgae, it will also get um, um, significant um, significant um, sustainability sustainability advantage because um, the, the existing food the existing um, sugar and amino acids are mostly produced through uh, tra traditionally traditional crops like uh, corn or, or um, and and sugar cane but they also have their own sustainability issues but if we move move to microalgae the basically we completely get away from those um ag traditional agri um, agricultural um, um, uh, traditional uh, um, environmental issues associated with large scale agriculture Then there's the third, uh, third, third issue of cell culture density. In, so, uh, or third issue of low cell culture density mm, and causing uh, causing um, high uh, high capital expenditure for the bioreactor. We've already increased the cell density to five to the ten to the seventh, which is basically about the same as. Um, a Future, uh, the one by future meat technologies and Israeli startup that that's often that's reported to have the world's highest uh, cell culture density among the uh, cell, cellular agriculture startups. So with these three efforts combined, um, we have some cost reduction trajectory as shown here uh, toward um, uh, three point five dollars per hundred gram uh, per machine in uh, twenty five. Mm. Uh, and this figure includes uh, the capex, um, uh, culture, waste culture, me waste culture medium um, and treatment and all those things. And these figures are not aspirational. They, they, they is, uh, based on the actual quotes we get, we get from manufacturers. So um, we can say um, uh, high fidelity for these figures here. And how our, how our methods compare? Uh, the, we, the comparisons is made based on the cost of growth factors, which basically cost it takes about it takes up about like more than ninety percent of the whole production cost. Uh, the, compared to the Calnet system, the uh, competitors will be um, growth factors produced by recombinants or uh, plant extracts. Um, and we have we have our own figures. Uh, but and the competitors also uh, competitors have uh, some aspirational figures, uh, but even compared to that, our method has got um, um, our method can produce the growth factors at cheaper price, and even at the at the scale in the future, uh, economy of scale works with our system while um, the recombinant and plant extract. Uh, and it becomes um, it's more of a the variable cost, which basically which is required as you produce more meat. Whereas uh, the, if you use the counted system, once the system is there, um, it, economy of scale can go and mm, mm, um, go to um, go to below zero, uh, below uh, one dollar per uh, below a dollar uh, per uh, kilogram of meat. So that was about our technology, and this is what we are planning to, uh, planning to do with this technology. So we are providing this technology to uh, the users, uh, which is most likely food companies, 
But although this technology could be used to make produce fur and, and pharmaceuticals and, and, and cosmetics and such as well. Mm. So uh, if there's a if there's a, a client who wants to use our system to produce beef or the fish or whatever, they can come to us. We start with we start with feasibility optimization um, as a as a paid research for a small scale um, to build the countless system. And once it and once the countless and once the cell, um, feeder cell combinations are worked out, it can go to step three and four, step four toward commercial scale, commercial scaling. And at the end. The actual physical cowlet system unit will be installed at the client, and so that the client can start producing meat. And in and in the and any second and third and fourth clients who also want to make beef or fish, they can just install our system um, and for a license fee. And as the technology develops, um, there will there will probably be a shortcut like a new client just being able to start from step three or step four directly. Um, so here's the traction. Uh, we have um, traditional food company clients as well as um, um, cellular agriculture startup clients. Uh, the cellular agriculture startup clients have more burning needs for cheaper growth factors. So that's our target area now. Um, well, Shiok Meat is a Singaporean, a Singapore-based cell, uh, cell cultured shrimp company. Uh, Finless, Finless Foods is a, uh, a cell cultured tuna, and working on cell cultured tuna. So, the, so here's, uh, this shows our business model. So, so integrate culture company along with the, with the um, co collaborators that we call the Countless Consortium. We provide the whole uh, uh, cellular agriculture infrastructure that's hardware, consumables, and related services uh, to the clients. Um, and the clients produce meat uh, and their own, own cons um, and, and that goes to the, uh, the end customers. And on the, the current consortium side, in, uh, it, in, we have uh, active joint R&D programs with uh, companies in different sectors, including plant engineering, building facilities, um, um, basal medium, and food processing. Because at the end, what we are going to provide is a, a petrochemical complex scale uh, agricultural, cellular agriculture uh, facilities. And that's not something that one single company can provide. So here we're joining forces. Uh, um, we have about um, about twenty entities in the Countless Consortium. Um, it, we plan to make this make this uh, global for next year and and the, beyond. So what's happening here is those Countless Consortium companies, each with each specialized in building facilities and bioreactors and such, uh, provide the uh, components for the cell agriculture infrastructure, and the infrastructure is provided is uh, sold to the um, clients. So it basically has got a, a double-sided network effects. But to prove this um, Calmet system infrastructure, um, we we probably need to make a demonstration, and that we are doing with cell cultured foie gras, which which is as as known uh, has got animal welfare issues in the in the production process while having high unit price um, and. And, and te uh, technological ease to make from cell agriculture point of view, because um, it, foie gras is a pasty. <laughs> a lot of foie gras products is actually a pasty food, um, and we don't have to make those uh, complex tissue engineering. Uh, we don't need to apply those uh, complex tissue engineering uh, techniques for this kind of product. Uh, that we are launching. Um, that we are launching in. in um, uh, launching in Japan very soon. Uh, in um, next, um, so the first sample is uh, going for going on sale in next three two three months with a proper market launch in uh, launch uh, toward um, August and September next year. We start with luxury restaurants and gradually and, and gradually expands um, as we uh, as we develop uh, 220 kilogram per month machine and 4.6 ton per month machine in the uh, in the coming future. And, and we and retail launch we expect expecting in with 4.6 ton per month machine. 
and this is done in alongside um, actual product development. Uh, the other product is a salamander, which is cosmetics ingredient. This is already on the market. Um, this is basically the cultured serum produced by the Calmet system um, that's active, um, that's targeted towards skin cells. Uh, that uh, already on the market. The first product with the, with salamand in, 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 uh, included uh, is launching um, next uh, next month. Um, and we have three, four more companies in conversation to use our um, product. And once the market is the market is ready, they recognize the ingredient cosmetics ingredient salamand. Um, we are planning for our own branded cosmetics in the in the near future. But this um, building our own own brand cosmetics is um, itself is also a big task. So we have to be careful on when when exactly to start on this. So that so this um, slide basically summarizes our growth strategy. Um, our our core business is on the pipeline leading toward um, the platform. So product product A, B, C, D toward X. Uh, it, they, it corresponds to beef, chicken, um, fish, shrimp, or whatever. Um, it, each go from basic developments to uh, scaling, and finally toward um, um, broad licensing um, to build a cell agriculture platform. And foie gras and salamand, although we do our production and sales of ourselves at the beginning, it basically all goes to, they are all demonstration products leading to the Unicomet platform. Um, and so, um, so here, so that's basically what we, uh, what we do. Uh, and here we want to start discussions on uh, anyone who wants to use our Calnet system to make cell cultured products as well as uh, companies that have got um, uh, technologies that can be applied for cellular agriculture. Yeah. Thank you very much. So the, uh, thank you, thank you, Yuki. Questions. Thank you, Yuki, very much, very much appreciated. Very fascinating. Um, so how did you, the, the Colnet Consortia is very interesting. How did you um, assemble these disparate organizations um, and how long did that take? Or, or, are you still adding more? What's kind of the, the process there and, and how how big can the consortium get? Uh, yeah, so this Calnet consortium, um, right now it's mostly um, a joint, a joint R&D partners uh, and um, the IP is being, sh being shared, um, um, IP is being shared, um, competing com companies can join in the same, uh, same consortium. Uh, uh, so, at the end, what's going, what's happening? What's going to happen is that um, the multiple, say, let's say, Calnet hardware companies can sell their own models of the Calnet system to the clients on the right. So it's kind of like um, um, the, like an I, uh, standardized uh, standardized com computers. So there are multiple graphic board companies. Um, all producing the gra graphic boards uh, under um, the same standard, and the clients can be like their personal customers or little business customers. Got it. And you, you mentioned IP. What is the state of um, Integriculture's IP at the moment? Uh, yeah. So. The, so Integrity Culture Company is uh, involved in the IP of all um, of everything coming out of the Calnet Consortium. So what happens is uh, every, every time uh, um, a Calnet Consortium company sell their bioreactor or building facility or base or medium or whatever, um, the IP license fee, uh, part, part of the IP license fee comes to us. Uh, so that's shown on the left, on the left here. This arrow going, uh, arrow of dollar going in between in Calnet Consortium to, um, and us. Got it. So obviously, you guys um, have a lot of advantages over your competition. Uh, most notably, perhaps, is cost. Are there mm. other? Are there other um, other factors? I'm thinking taste or mouth feel. Does the does the culture media medium media mm impart any taste or or other um, you know attributes to the end product 
uh, that is, um, although it has been um, properly, um, uh, properly uh, proven uh, or properly uh, what is it, uh, validated, it's potentially, potentially yes, because um, the competitors are, what their competitors are doing is the they're using uh, only one one or two types of specific growth factors and to make the cell uh, to make the cells grow but uh, the counter counter serum uh, contains a uh, whole other ingredients including um non-peptide growth factors and fats and those things so so we expect that it will have uh, some um an effect on the taste and we obviously we want to choose the the, the good effect on the taste and but on top of that, uh, um, the counter serum it can also make so-called uh, um, cell cultured immunity, which may simplify further simplify the cell culture uh, cell culture system. And what I mean by the cell cultured immunity is that uh, uh, there's a component called lysozyme uh, in, uh, in in natural uh, serum, or it's also included in uh, uh, in egg white. And that basically, this lysozyme is a component that um, works against bacteria or other other advantageous um, agents. And this is also and this um, and this advantage. <laughs> this con uh, this contaminants a big a huge issue in uh, in the production process of cell cultured meat. And if we can somehow prevent this. Uh, it has got a um, major advantage, especially on the uh, on the bioreactor design side. Great. For those in attendance, I forgot to mention now is a great time if you have questions to ask Yuki. Um, and there are a couple ways to do that. You can type in a question in the chat pane or you can raise your hand and I can unmute you and you can ask Yuki a question directly. Um, but Yuki, another question. Uh, mm -hmm. Curious why you guys don't have to go through a regulatory process. Uh, yeah, so that's partially because uh, we are not using any externally added growth factors. Um, so uh, and another advantage is that we are in, we are in Japan, uh, where a cell cultured meat is already even, <laughs> already uh, what is it uh, uh, good to uh, good to market launch. So we've already spoken with the, uh, the with the re re regulatory bodies, and um, we've we've um, we've described that um, our technology does not use any uh, anything that's not listed as food, like raw factors. Um, so technically, our product counts as pickled meat. So like a very a tiny fragment of meat pickled under a pickling solution called uh, the basal uh, called the culture medium. So. Great. And are you seeing are you seeing differences in speed or efficiency mm. with with different uh, different types of protein, be it shrimp or tuna or beef? Uh, yeah, so so we are seeing some differences, especially for uh, tuna, tuna and other fish and seafood species. And the cell culture tends to happen at lower temperature, which is, uh, which somewhat slows down the process, uh, but it's not a critical difference. Got it. Great. Well, Yuki, um, curious what you think kind of the next five to 10 years look like um, in Japan and, and uh, perhaps in the US with cell-based meat? Do you think, what percentage of market share do you think will be uh, cell-based in let's say, um, you know, um, ground-based agriculture uh, mm. by, by, 20, by 2030? Do you have yeah, a prediction yeah. there? Yeah, I think it will trace plant-based meat and I think the, uh, the the total share of plant-based meat at right now is I think even less than one percent worldwide. Um, so despite the huge hype around, um, it tends to basically uh, um, go below the expect uh, expectation uh, when there's a hype. Uh, but um, later on, it tends to beat the expectations. So I think the uh, the same could happen with cell culture meat. So they, despite the hype, 2030, the share is very, very low, but towards 40 and 50, it could even beat the expectations. Great. 
Well, it's, it's an exciting time um, and we really appreciate your work. Thank you for uh, being an entrepreneur and working on uh, the tough problems. Um, for those in attendance, uh, we will, uh, as, re as a reminder, we host these every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central um, and they are recorded. So if you know anybody who might be interested in, in hearing what you had to say, uh, please let them know. They can sign up uh, at agrifoodconversations.com. Um, and a replay will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, so if you'd like to learn more, if cell-based meat is an interest of yours, please join us next week as we learn about another company innovating in cell-based meat. Uh, the month of December will be, as a reminder, uh, cell-based meat focused. So thank you everybody for attending. Yuki, thank you very much for getting up early in Japan and uh, telling us about your, uh, your cool company. Um, and hopefully we'll all, uh, all talk soon. Thanks everybody. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you.